I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to have a sermon all set to go. <laughs> when I first came to, to join the congregation of Windermere, I used to visit uh, with uh, Steve Sloop, who was the pastor at that time, and as we got chatting along, he said, you know, I always carry a sermon in my wallet so that no matter where I go, if all of a sudden something comes up, I can open my wallet and pull the sermon out and I'm all set to go. Well, I opened up my wallet <laughs> and I, I forgot to follow through. And so that can either mean it's going to be a very long sermon, a very short sermon, or maybe no sermon at all. <laughs> and I decided that In the epistles, it says, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is in you. Now, that's not a sermon. That's a, that's a story about one's life and how God has been active in the past and how in the present things are beginning to happen in the life which God provides. And so I want to tell you about me. Now, some of you think you know me, and maybe you do, at least the last 26 years. Before that, you really don't know me. So I want to tell you about me. I want to tell you about this God who takes care of people and takes care of people in the way that is needed at that moment, in that point in time. There I was, a nice little boy, so good. I always got in grief in Sunday school. So much so that the Sunday school teachers would rather that I not be in their class. I was a very good non-student. I was a very mischievous student. And so when it came uh, the end of nursery and they moved me on up to kindergarten, that also meant that uh, I was eligible for the children's choir. And so they kind of urged me into the choir, hoping that that might help me along and the teachers wouldn't have to put up with this red-headed boy who could not sit still and wouldn't sit still. And in case you don't know it, there is a difference between can't and won't. So I'm the kind of child way back when. And so I began to grow, sang in the choir at church, I had a choice. And, uh, and then my aunt, always messing in my life, trying to straighten me out, uh, heard about a church in New York that was looking for boys sopranos for the choir. And so I got an audition, and I didn't think I did so hot. Next thing you know it, I'm attending rehearsals three days a week, uh, two services on Sunday, one at 11 and one at four o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, I'm having a good time singing because I like to sing. Uh, but I also continue to be the kind of guy. And one of the other boys in the choir took exception to a note I sang. I didn't understand that I didn't sing the right note. Uh, and so I said, maybe we ought to settle this outside. <laughs> then the choir master had to take him to the choir, to the hospital, 
to get his eye fixed. Yeah. And meanwhile, I'm in trouble. Next thing I know it, uh, we got to do something with him. So I'm on my way to a boys' prep school, a Christian prep school. You, if you don't under, feel the current, you understand how much a person can violate other people along the way. And so my aunt got me into this prep school by another interview. And uh, so the headmaster asked the question, you know, what were you, you listen to the sermon while it, oh yes, yes. Uh, and so the headmaster asked me, what was the sermon about last week? Now I want to tell you, up there in the pulpit, there is the notes, John's notes for last Sunday's sermon. And somebody, I said, oh, I could use this. And somebody said, and how many people do you think remembered the sermon for last week? By the way, did you remember last Sunday's sermon? Oh, but we'll leave that go. What I'm trying to show you is that our God doesn't give up on us. He had every right to give up on, on me along life's way. You can call me uh, whatever, juvenile delinquent, pre-juvenile delinquent, post-juvenile delinquent. But along the way, God never gave up. And so the next thing I know it, I'm not only going to this prep school, in between my junior and senior year, uh, I got the chance to go to uh, Jack Wurtson's camp up in Canada for eight, six weeks. And uh, all I had to do was uh, help us a bit because I had life-saving and stuff on the waterfront. So I did that. And back in those days, uh, the boys' camp was here, the girls' camp was here, and here in the middle was Chapel Point. And both the girls' camp and the boys' camp went to church on Sunday mornings and I was a good little kid. I, I knew how to paddle a canoe. And so I got to be one of those privileged characters to paddle co girls from their camp to the chapel. And I met this lovely girl. Now, you understand, you got to follow this. Because somewhere along the line, God and I really meet up face to face. That's where I want to bring you, okay? Well, anyhow, I'm, I'm paddling the canoe back and forth with these girls. And lo and behold, I ended the, you had what they call a bow paddler. That was a girl. And uh, I had the same bow paddler on the last trip to Chap. Now, if you can't figure out what's going to happen, I'll, I'll shorten the story. I ended up sitting on the back row at the campfire with Helen. And I sat with Helen every Sunday for eight weeks. Lovely. Delightful chapel services. No, I didn't listen to the sermon. <laughs> but there were other, those things. The music singing choir in New York. The being uh, the, at the chapel. And f from my perspective, for one reason, for Helen. You know, the, the, let's, uh, you know, let's call it what it is. All right, so, but what happens is God in his economy is, is, uh, is, is working. And I don't really know it, and I should have, but I'm not smart enough. Or, or is it blind? Or stubborn? And after the camp, 
period was over, there was a conference period. I didn't have any money left, or the family didn't have any money left from trying to keep me out of trouble. I thought I'd have to go home. And then at dinner one night, they said, we have a few openings uh, for uh, dishwashers during the conference period. If, if, if you're interested, uh, see us after, after dinner's over. I'm also a track person, and I couldn't run fast enough to get one of those jobs. Why? Because Helen was going to be at the conference. But in God's economy, my counselor, was, who was supposed to keep me out of trouble, was a missionary to the Muslims, and his influence was coming on my life. But uh, last night uh, of the conference, they gave an invitation. And um, I basically said, no thanks, not for me. And uh, one of the counselors caught me after and talked with me. I said, no thanks. And I left. That was on Friday of Labor Day weekend, 1947. And lo and behold, I got home on a Friday morning, dumped my dirty clothes. Mom, will you take care of these? Picked up some clean clothes, and went off to the annual Labor Day weekend youth retreat in New Jersey. And I went to that with my normal intent. As things would have it, there was a Another girl named Helen that I used to see every Labor Day weekend at the youth retreat. And there I am on the Sunday night in the back row of the campfire. You can just picture that campfire there. And I was about this close to it with my arm around hell. And the campfire speaker was actually the pastor of the church I came from. And he was a nice guy in the best sense of the word, a good pastor in the best sense of the word. As a preacher, mm, not so good. <laughs> but when it came time for to close that service, Sunday night, Labor Day weekend, 1947. He gave the invitation, not for somebody to become a Christian, because I already had made that kind of profession, but this was to be somebody who would go out and be a full-time servant of Jesus Christ. I was there in the back row arm around Helen. I slipped my arm from behind her and went down to the campfire, made my decision. Lo and behold, next thing you know it, I'm on my way to, back to college, only this time I'm studying to be a minister. When I got done with the college, then I had to go to cemetery, I mean seminary. <laughs> And along life's way, you see, God does not give up on anybody. I can, my witness is for him, he does not give up. If you go out of here, down in the dumps for any reason, your God and mine does not give up. Doesn't happen may not be on your timetable, but it will be on his. Now you've just heard the, the testimony of an individual, and in the scriptures it says, be always ready to give an answer for the hope that is in you. When you go home this afternoon, you got a few minutes. 
think about. Think about this God who has been part and parcel of your life from the beginning. Think about this God who knows all that's going on in your life. All the good stuff and all the mm, not so good. Think about all of it. Think about this God who's always present so that no matter where you are, in the quiets of your home, at the job during the week, on the playgrounds, think about this God who loves you and keeps you and cares for you for however long you live. Jenny is a hundred year, going to be a hundred years celebration. Here it comes. My celebration has been going on for 92 years. I'm trying to catch up with Jenny. I don't know if I'm going to make it. But the point is, the God that loves you and loves me is the God that's going to be with you all the way. All the way. Put your story together. Be ready to give an answer for the hope that's in you. Let us pray. Eternal God, ever-present loving Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us along the way. Thank you for keeping us along the way. Thank you for never giving up on us all the way. We pray that the love that you've shown to us individually and together might spread out from this place to wherever we go this week in Christ.